Dancing Rabbit and welcome to Saturday Pagan Perspective. I'm doing this as part of a marathon early morning video making session and I hope to do all of the uh, stuff, the editing and upload them sometime later today when I get home to my computer. This week we have two questions and all of the other hosts have read the questions and so I'll just try to quickly summarize and maybe that will give you the, in, my impression of what the questioner meant by the question. The first one is asking, can a, um, a pagan and an atheist uh, both practice witchcraft together? And my answer, my quick answer is yes. You know, assuming that other things are compatible I see no reason why um, this should prevent you from practicing together. Now, as a Unitarian Universalist, I sit in worship most Sunday mornings and about half or more of the people in the room are atheists and agnostics, non-theists. The rest of us theists are divided between liberal Christians radical monotheists, we have a few Muslims, we have a few Jews, and we have a few pagans who find in some way or fashion the concept of God or goddess or gods or great spirit or spirit of life to be useful in their spiritual practice. So I'm used to um, worshiping with people who believe quite differently than myself and in getting something out of the worship service whether it is a liberal Christian service or a humanist service or even the very occasional Buddhist, Hindu and uh, pagan services. I think that I agree with Eric that it may be a little difficult to um, participate in a worship circle with somebody from a drastically different tradition. If you're going to do more than just sort of be there and kind of observe. In the uh, large group that Feather and I work with, Rhythm of Life, we have, um, we are basically kind of Wiccan, uh, Pan-Celtic uh, pagans. We have one uh, lady who is dedicated to the Irish goddess Bridget. We have one who is an Italian witch, one who practices Sumerian paganism, and we have a couple of, I guess you'd call them newbies, that really haven't exactly defined themselves, and that's perfectly okay. You don't really ever have to define yourself as this or that. But I'm used to, in circle, participating and invoking other people's deities and um, doing it a little different than I would do it if it were just Feather and myself or just myself alone. So if we can worship with folks that believe differently from us, then I think that it's definitely possible. I do know a, an atheist pagan and I haven't had a chance to really talk at length with him exactly what he means by, <clears throat> excuse me, by his atheism. That Perhaps um, he doesn't believe in deities at all. Perhaps he believes the gods are symbolic, that they're archetypes and not real beings out there somewhere. Um, you know, I'm not really sure, but I have been in circle with him and I have done magic with him in larger groups and it seems to work just fine. Getting down more to particulars and getting away from um, the religious spiritual part of it and down to the craft part. You, you said specifically witchcraft and I differentiate witchcraft which is the craft, the spell work from paganism which is the religion because I've run into witches of all sorts of different religions and none at all. Most of the brujas and brujos uh, Mexican witches that I've met in the uh, South Texas community are Roman Catholic by religion, 
but they practice magic. The hoodoo and uh, practitioners that I met back in South Arkansas were all Protestant Christians. That was their religion, but they also practiced a craft. So I think that it is quite possible for a person who is not only an atheist, but not particularly religious, to practice spell work with you. Now, I would um, hope that they are otherwise compatible with you and that they have an ethic about their magic which is also compatible with your ethic. I think that the ethics and the otherwise compatibilities are more important if we're just talking spell work than uh, that you have the same religion or that you worship the same gods or that you worship any particular god at all. Second question has to do with belief. Uh, how much, to what extent, does belief affect the effectiveness of spells? Do you have to really, really, really believe it for it to work? And what happens if, after you've cast the spell, you start having doubts? My answer may be quite different from several of the other answers. It may be quite different from your own personal answer. But it's what I believe. And, you know, I could be wrong. But I'd like you to consider it. Um, personally, I don't think that belief has a whole lot to do with the effectiveness of a spell. Let me explain why. When I do a work of magic, when I cast a spell, I'm doing certain symbolic actions that help raise energy, raise power, and shift my consciousness. And when a certain point is reached, that energy is directed toward a goal. Now, I don't think that it's really important that a person doing a spell believe that it's going to work. I'm not saying that you can just shuffle through the motions mechanically or that it's kind of like Harry Potter if you flick your wand this way and you say the words that way that it works. No, uh, just going through the motions, just saying, okay, I'm going to light a green candle and that'll bring me a new job or bring me money, and that's all you do. Um, you haven't raised power, you haven't shifted consciousness. You've just, um, you know, shuffled through whatever the book said or whatever somebody told you, and you're just going through the motions of doing a spell. I uh, had some involvement with uh, what's called prosperity gospel, charismatic movement, and they, like the New Age folks, firmly believe that belief is all important. Belief is everything. And that you can believe things into existence. You can speak them into existence by positive affirmations. Now I think a positive attitude is probably better than a negative attitude. But I don't believe that just because I believe it and I think it, that it makes it happen. I don't think that it works that way. The universe does not revolve around me and what I think about. And these, these groups, uh, Prosperity Gospel Christians and many of the New Age people, become almost paranoid after they have prayed a prayer or after they have um, let forth an intention into the universe that if they have any doubts, that it won't work. If they uh, say anything negative, that it'll cause bad things to happen. If you're not familiar with this, turn on some of your late night cable TV and listen to some of the prosperity gospel evangelists and uh, pay attention to what they're saying and what they're implying by what they say. Or pick up a copy of the book, The Secret and read through it. It's the same kind of idea that we create our own reality through our thoughts and through our words. And personally, I don't, I don't believe it. My spiritual path 
doesn't operate that way. So to kind of sum up and uh, reiterate, put it all kind of in a nutshell, um, I think that it's good to have beliefs, but my paganism is not orthodox, it's orthopraxic. It has to do with doing the correct things, particularly in ritual and in ethics. So if you perform the spell correctly, and I'm talking about you raise and direct energy, not just shuffle through the motions of it, the spell will work as much as it would ever work. And afterwards, if you have doubts, second thoughts about it, the spell has been cast. The word cast means to throw or to project at. And so if you throw the ball and it's headed toward the window and you go, oops, I want it to come back, tough, you got a broken window. You cast the ball without uh, taking good aim, you cast the spell without thinking it through, and it's going to go on and do whatever it's going to do. Now, I think the word magic can fix it was used, and Eric has already spoken to this, but let me speak to it again. I don't believe that magic by itself can fix things. Our district Paleolithic ancestors when they were going to go out on a hunt, they did ritual. They did hunting magic. But they didn't do their ritual, their hunting magic, and then sit down and expect wild game to just drop into their circle and, uh, you know, kill and, and field dress itself before them. No, they went out very early the next morning and they hunted. They did the hard, dangerous, risky, frightening work of hunting. And their spell work aided them. Their spell work helped them. So if you're going to do a money spell and you do it well and you direct energy, don't sit around waiting for that check in the mail because it probably ain't coming. Go out and look for a job. If you do a love attracting spell, and I think you have to be kind of careful with those because they can go all sorts of unintended directions. Don't just sit home waiting for Mr. Wright or Miss Wright to knock on the door and sweep you off the, your feet. You're going to have to make plans. You're going to have to go out and meet people. You're going to have to make yourself presentable, make yourself a little bit lovable for the spell to work. So this has been a rather long video. I hope that some of what I have said has sparked ideas in your own mind. Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree, but that's okay. Think about it and figure it out for yourself. Till next time, Dancing Rabbit, wishing you and yours, as always, peace.